Welcome to The Shift List. My name is Matt, and this is the best-selling VW and the biggest compact SUV in the game. This is VW's Tiguan. And while the Tiguan is ready for a new generation next year, newer doesn't necessarily mean better. So today, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the 2024 VW Tiguan, thanks to my friends at Hall VW in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Let's get into it. <laughs> First, let's cover what's new about the Tiguan for 2024. Now, this generation of Tiguan, which is the second one, came out in 2018. It got a facelift in 2022, but there's a host of new updates for 2024. The base S trim now gets IQ drive as standard. You get auto high beams as standard. You get rain sensing wipers as standard. You get an upgraded infotainment screen, the bigger screen as standard, and you get a wireless charger as standard. That's some pretty good kit to come for free but let's talk about the engine, what's under the hood. Well, just like its bigger brother Atlas, you only have one option, but it's a pretty good one. It's a two liter turbocharged four cylinder VW's EA888 engine, which is in about just about everything, GTI, Golf R, all the good stuff. And here in the Tiguan, it makes 184 horsepower and 221 pound feet of torque, which means zero to 60 is done well, not at Golf R speeds, it's done in like nine seconds. So that is pretty slow, but this isn't a performance SUV, this is a family SUV, so that's probably okay. But what does that mean for fuel economy? Well, your front wheel drive Tiguan, which you can get as base, gets about 27 MPG combined. If you go up for all wheel drive, you're gonna to drop to about 25 MPG combined. And if you want all wheel drive with the cool sporty R line like we have here, you're gonna drop one more to about 24 MPG combined. So not class leading, but not the worst. And then we just touched on it, but let's talk more about configuration. Now, as standard, you can get front wheel drive, and that comes standard with three rows of seats. All wheel drive cars can't actually get three rows of seats. You go for the four motion, you go for all wheel drive, and you can't get the third row. Now, me personally, I don't think that I would get the third row anyway because it will sacrifice the second row leg space, which is fabulous, and it'll sacrifice some trunk space, which is also very good. So for me, I'm all good with the all wheel drive and only two rows of seats. If I need a third row, I'm gonna go up to the Atlas. But yes, front wheel drive as standard and four motion is a little extra. But let's talk looks. Now here you get LED headlights as standard. They're almost like BMW. BMW angel eyes. Look at that, the way they come down. And you get the LED light bar that goes all the way across the grill. And of course here with the R line, it's the most sporty looking. You got that chrome grill with the little R designation. Looks just like the Golf R. And then your lower fascia is more aggressive as well. You don't get fog lights though, which is a little bit interesting come around the side. It's a good time to mention that you do get seven available colors on your Tiguan, which is pretty nice. It's a lot of options. It's more than you get for most things. And in terms of your wheel options, you can go from 17s on the base all the way up to these 20s on this SEL R line. And these look pretty, pretty cool. You've also got a little R line designation on your front fender badge. You've got chrome window treatments, another chrome bar down at the side skirt. But look, a very classic SUV shape to maximize rear space, headroom, and cargo space. But then we come up here and we see these chrome roof rails and these are actually standard, which is pretty cool, believe it or not. And then around back, you get LED taillights as standard. That's pretty nice. Tiguan across the middle, not too big, not too small, more minimal VW logo, but <laughs> your SCL in the R line gets this offensively fake exhaust. But while we're back here, we should talk about towing. Now, the Tiguan will get you up to 1,500 pounds of towing. That's kind of in line. It's kind of in line with pretty much everything else in the segment. CRV is going to do about 1,500 pounds. Maybe it's even 1,000. And then the RAV4 will do, I believe, 1,750. Or the RAV4 Prime that we're also in this week does 2,500. But if you want the most in the segment, you're going to go to the Mazda CX-50 with the turbo, and that'll get you 3,500. So another 2,000 or a full ton over what this Tiguan's going to do. But I suspect 1,500 pounds is probably enough for most people. And then we're going to check out the trunk, one of the best features of this Tiguan, because it is absolutely massive. With the rear seats up here, you get 38 cubic feet of space. I believe that is the biggest in the segment, and it looks it. This is a deep, deep trunk. And of course, under here, you have a spare which is pretty nice. Of course, privacy cover that fits conveniently under the floor. That is thoughtful. Thank you, VW. You've also got things like grocery bag hangers, very thoughtful as well. And you can fold the rear seats and they fold 40, 20, 40 from the trunk. Again, not something that you see all the time. And with the rear seats down, you're gonna get 74 cubic feet of space and they fold nice and flat. And again, that is just about class leading, which is pretty cool. The only weird thing 
is that you have a close button like we do in the RAV4, but no close and lock button. And then we'll check out the rear seats. Now, you got some nice contrasted white stitching on your door card. You don't have window shades. Maybe I might expect that, but I think it's okay. But look at this. You have an absolutely massive rear space here for your cabin. You can, like I said, get three rows, which is gonna make this a little bit shorter. You've got four inches more legroom than just about anything else in the segment. It's also gonna hamper your trunk space. So I'm good with just the two rows. But I'm 6'1", I'll get in here, and look at this. I have like almost six inches of knee room here, and I even have space for my head with the panoramic roof. We test a lot of these compact SUVs here at Downshift or Shiftless, whatever we're calling this channel, and a lot of them don't leave a lot of space for my head, especially with my hat and my nub, but this one does. You do get climate vents back here, but not a specific climate zone, at least not on this one, USB-C and a 12 volt. The only thing I'm gonna really ding it on is no heated rear seats like you can get on something like the RAV4 or the Tucson or the Mazdas even. But then we might as well talk about the front seats. Now, they are aggressively bolstered. I feel it every time I get in, I kind of slip down this little hill, but it's kind of nice. It keeps you in, in your seat, makes you feel a little bit sportier. You do have three level memory, which is pretty good, but these seats are heated. On your top trim SEL here, you will get cooled seats, as you can see there, and they are pretty comfortable and they look cool. Again, with this white accented detailing, this goes a long way for me on something that's otherwise just black. So this white detailing on the inside and the chrome really kind of livens it up. Then I want to talk about some interior treats or a little specifics. We have huge amounts of storage. This is great for like a big full-size water bottle. A lot of times the water bottles aren't fitting here, so you can fit them in the door bins, which is very thoughtful. You've got a nice little netted cubby here, wireless charger. We talked about that being standard. Little center console, but one of my favorites is this weird little storage bin on top of the dash that you see in like a bunch of pickup trucks, but you get it here in your posh German family SUV, which is kind of cool. We talk about the climate controls. They are touch sensitive and sliders. I can still operate them with my glove on, which is nice. And they are lit up, which they weren't in the GTI and Golf R that we were in. So you can actually operate these at night. And then your steering wheel. This is was new for, I believe, 2022. Again, a lot of touch controls, sliders. You do have a heated steering wheel, which is nice. I think it looks pretty cool and it does feel pretty good. The heated steering wheel does get pretty hot pretty quickly, which is really nice. But overall, the interior space just feels very Audi Q5 to me. It's kind of clean and minimal, but still feels pretty well slapped together and it's a good interior. Then we'll talk a little bit about screens. Now, interestingly, you don't have a head up display on your Tiguan, even in SEL here. A little bit of a bummer. I guess it's, it's fine. I don't really need it because you do have a very big digital cockpit. Now as standard, it's about eight inches. This is the SEL, so it gets you the big 10 inch screen. The black levels are perfect. The dials change color with your ambient light and you do get some nice treats in here. You go over to your infotainment system. This is the 10 inch system. This is the standard infotainment screen. You love to see that. Wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. That's standard. 360 camera, 360 camera. Decent. This is foggy, so it's really hard to tell today, but maybe if we can get VW to give us one of these for a week, we can give it a little bit more of a test. But you can make the 360 full screen. You can throw it around here. And then I believe, yeah, it's almost like the Audi virtual cockpit thing. It's like a combination of the Audi system and also the Subaru Ascent system where it like buffers and changes. It doesn't go black and then change back on, but it's just kind of interesting. I mean, to be honest, you're just gonna leave it like this and this is gonna be more than fine. It's a, it's a decent camera though. Now you can probably tell that this is the older software suite, which actually I kind of like. It doesn't give you as much customizability like here. We're gonna go into vehicle settings and ambient lighting. One of my favorite things is ambient lighting. So you do get ambient lighting through the cabin, through your doors, dash, and then of course accented here and here, but it's not quite as robust as like we saw in the new Atlas and the new GTI, or the GTI and Golf R from last year. So I expect the newer software to show up on the upgraded or new generation 2025 Tiguan. But for here, for now, it's still perfectly good. And look at this, there's nothing on the screen now. I put my finger close and it shows up and now I can give it detail. But the only thing I don't like about the system is the classic VW volume scroll. Ugh. But one of the nice things is that you get IQ drive as standard. Now you can upgrade to the travel assist for a more robust adaptive cruise and lane tracing or lane centering, whatever they're gonna call it. But it is a pretty good system. And on your R line, you can get the dynamic road sign reader. So it'll tell you exactly 
what it thinks the speed limit is based on what it's seen outside. And we've kind of touched on it, but there's a lot of standard stuff that you get here. You get that power tailgate as standard, auto high beams, rain sensing wipers, the leather steering wheel, the wireless charger, the LED headlights and tail lights, the upgraded or bigger, I guess it's not bigger because it's standard, infotainment screen, and heated seats up front, and that's all standard. You know, the Atlas was carrying a bunch of new standard equipment for this year, and you get a bunch of standard stuff here in the Tiguan as well. That's a big win for VW, I think. And the last thing we'll touch on before we go for a drive is the price, and it's pretty good. The Tiguan starts at $28,505, which puts it just about smack on with something like the main rivals, like the CRV and the RAV4. So with that in mind, let's grab the key and go for a bit of a drive. Here we go in the Tiguan. There's the turbo, here it comes. No paddle shifters. But we're off. I mean, it's not bad. This is, uh, what, 184 horsepower, 221 pound-feet of torque, though. Whereas, you know, I think we made a comparison that my Mazda CX-5 gets better fuel economy, but that doesn't have the turbo, so that has, like, 40 pound-feet less torque. But here's the thing. You start to go into a corner, there's really no steering feel. There's no discernible steering feel at all. The steering is very light. It gets a little bit better in sport mode here, but it is still very, very light. Brakes, they work. They're not incredibly bitey, but this isn't a performance SUV. Power. Gearbox, eight speed does well. Takes you all the way to red line. Okay, I'm gonna chill it out because this thing is not that fast. It's like, I think, uh, I think it's like nine seconds to 60. So <laughs> it's not winning any drag races, but that's really not what this thing is about. This thing is about size, it's about space, it's about practicality, getting all of your family and all your crap in here and moving you around as comfortably as possible. And I will say, it is very good at that. I am very comfortable here, the damping is good, you do feel the bigger wheels on this R-Line a little bit, but overall, it is pretty, pretty comfortable. The visibility out the windows is excellent, the mirrors are great, you've got great safety equipment to keep you safe and all your family safe, and it's just, it's just easy, it's just nice to drive. I will say, the only thing that I'm really gonna ding it on, and it's not a sporty SUV, but I, you gotta review this thing in the way that it's intended to be driven. The only thing that I'm gonna dig this thing on, ding this thing on, is the steering. The steering is like, it's so light and there's just no feedback. Like I have a video game steering wheel for when I play like racing games on the Xbox or whatever. And there are force feedback wheels. So you turn the wheel and if you're in a corner, it'll load up resistance. This is like having a video game steering wheel that just didn't add force feedback. It's just like, no matter how much load is in the tires, there's just really no feedback here. But it is then easy to whip around, especially at lower speeds, in parking lots, around your neighborhood, picking up your kid from school or whatever. It's really easy to drive. And the cabin isolation is good. I mean, it's, it's hard to argue, unless if you are just looking for something that is the most practical, the most spacious, I mean, look no further. But if you're looking for something a little bit sportier, look look further but with that thank you to hall vw for letting us have a go in their tiguan and we hopefully will revisit the new one when it comes out hopefully with a hybrid powertrain but until then thank you guys so much for watching if you're interested to see how much or how this tiguan compares against things like cx5s and rav4s make sure you check out our best and rest video on downshift now we'll see you there